Lalita Jakam Vitams Cha E Krishna Kruna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopi Sha Gopi Ka Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchina Gaurangi Radhe Vrindamane Swari Rigavana Siti Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vansha Kalpatu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Veva Chati Tanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nishananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Asyaivayayam prakritir unanam jnana vairagya vidvim pitena vijim pitena vagena mayar pita yaja bhaktya magrayag atmanam ihavarunde translation thus by not engaging in the service of the modes of material nature, by developing Krishna conscious knowledge and renunciation, by practicing yoga, which the mind is always fixed in devotional service unto the personality of that head, one achieves my association in this very life, for I am the supreme personality, the absolute truth that Kapila Dev is speaking. When one engages in devotional service to the Lord, in the nine different kinds of bhakti yoga as enunciated in the authoritative scriptures, such as hearing, shravanam, chanting, chanting, kirtanam, remembering, offering, worship, praying, and offering personal service, either one of them or two or three of all of them, he naturally has no opportunity to engage in the service of the three modes of material nature. Unless one has good engagements in spiritual service, it is not possible to get out of the attachment to material service. Those who are not devotees, therefore, interested in so-called humanitarian or philanthropic work, such as opening a hospital or charitable institution, these are undoubtedly good works in the sense that they are pious activities. And the result is that the performer may get some opportunities for sense gratification either in this life or in the next. Devotional service, however, is beyond the boundary of sense gratification. It's completely spiritual activity. When one engages in spiritual activities of devotional service, naturally he does not get any opportunity to engage in sense gratificatory activities. Krishna conscious activities are performed not blindly, but with perfect understanding of knowledge and renunciation. This kind of yoga practice in which the mind is always fixed upon the Supreme Personality of God in devotion results in liberation in this very life. The person who performs such acts gets in touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Chaitanya therefore proved the process of hearing from a realized devotee about the pastimes of the Lord. It does not matter to what category of this world the audience belongs. If one meekly and submissively hears about the activities of the Lord from a realized soul, he'll be able to conquer the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is unconquerable by any other process. Hearing our association with devotees is the most important function for self-realization. Hare Krishna.
Hmm. So, Kapila Dave is speaking to his mother, Devahuti. Nefrahim. He says, My association in this life, where I am the Supreme Personality of God and the Absolute Truth. Well, Kapila Dave is indicating his position. He's speaking about himself, about the process of achieving his association, which is the uh, perfection of life. Here it says that one is simply switching. The theme of these verses is similar. Switching one's attention away from material activities. Uh, at sometimes people uh, lump in materialistic welfare activities and devotional activities as being the same. But actually it's different. Material welfare activities still remain within the context of the three modes of material nature and the motivation is one's personal gain. Or they want to be altruistic and try to assist persons who are struggling with the material energy. And they usually fall into different welfare categories, and such as opening hospitals and schools, um, planting trees, digging wells, um, offering food programs to feed the needy, housing programs to house the homeless. Uh, these in the material world are considered to be welfare activities that a person who does these is considered to be a well-wisher of others. And this is considered to be exalted in the material sense. But still, it remains, the motivation still is oneself. One is looking for some remuneration from these activities. And even if one is not, still, to gauge in activities related to the body means to simply foster the uh, success of material life. And therefore, it cannot be compared or devotional service cannot be compared to these activities. Devotional service, even just like Arjuna, what was Arjuna doing? He was on the battlefield. He was engaged in a war. He was asked to, to uh, kill the enemy. Now, killing and warfare is seen as something very horrendous from any point of view. But because it was sanctioned by Krishna, it was the Lord's desire that this war be the uh, enacted in order for saintly rule to be established on the throne. It is considered to be activities in devotional service. Whereas somebody who's opening hospitals and feeding the hungry is not as good as Arjuna's activity because it's done within the context of the three modes of material nature. And you might compare on another level, if someone is in the jail and um, they're, they, have, they behave very good in the jail, uh, they always give regards to their fellow prisoners and um, they also may have a position in the jail where they have some responsibility. Like I've seen, I've been to many jails where there are certain inmates who have um, extra privileges that uh, ordinary inmates would not, would not have. Uh, they also conduct operations. They work under the administration and they're given some responsibility because of their good record, you might say. And uh, they might find themselves uh, using those privileges uh, for greater freedom within the, in the jail. They can move more freely. Uh, but still, because they're in the jail, uh, they're criminals. And because they're in the jail, the activities are centered around jail life. 
So we can even make these categories in, a, in that particular example. But being in the material world is like being in the jail. And activities in order to foster the betterment of the jail is simply more in, in engagement for the living entity. Whereas devotional activities is meant to free the living entity from the entrapment of uh, having to take birth, having to die, having to get old and having to, to take disease. In other words, it brings them free from the cycle of samsara, the wheel of birth and death. So although the activity may be compared, just for example, killing as Arjun and doing philanthropical work for people in the needy in the material world, the activities may seem to be different and the spiritual activities may seem to be uh, more horrible from, from the material perspective, still because they are authorized by Krishna, they are devotional service, they are transcendental, and they bring people to a state of knowledge and detachment. Whereas the mode of goodness, although it's, um, it's the best of all modes, still it's because it's within the confines of the material energy, it binds one to more and more material activities, even though in a good position, still, it keeps one in the cycle of birth and death. Mm -hmm. So one has to engage in spiritual activities. Therefore, one has to take shelter of Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master, and receive guidance on how one can engage in spiritual activities. One cannot simply concoct their own ideas of this is spiritual and this is material. One has to be guided by Krishna through his representative, his pure devotee, who enunciates the activities accordingly and will, will engage one in activities that are uh, meant to elevate that person in, in relationship to devotional service. So that is necessary. One cannot figure out how to perform devotional service simply by their own ideas. Um, that remains based on speculation and usually it's motivated by personal interest. The devotional service is free from personal interest and it elevates the soul to a, a position of uh, freedom from the entrapment of the modes of material nature. So one has to take shelter of Krishna's representative, hear from them, and then engage accordingly. And as Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, one should approach the bona fide spiritual master uh, submissively with, under, with a desire to understand, ask questions that are relevant and be willing to engage in active service. Mm -hmm. We see here, uh, Kapila Dev is the Supreme Lord and he's speaking to his mother. So he's in the role of a spiritual master, although he is the Lord himself. He's taken the position of being the instructor um, Devahuti's husband, Kardama Muni, um, left married life after he produced a son to guide his mother, and then he left and went on for complete renunciation, free from all worldly entanglements. So now his mother is being guided by the Supreme Lord himself, who's playing the role of the spiritual master. So the instructions of Kapila Dev, although he is God himself, is in the role of guiding his mother, who is his disciple. So it's interesting, the Lord will actively play the role of the spiritual master. And it's also understood in a very, in a very uh, functional term of, the, of devotional service that 
the spiritual master is non-different from Krishna in the sense that he is doing the work of Krishna in the material world. Um, therefore, it says that there is guru who is serving and guru who is served. Guru who is served is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Guru who is serving is the spiritual master who manifests himself as Krishna's representative, who serves the Lord by engaging others in the service of the Lord. <laughs> so Prabhupada says here, if one meekly and submissively hears about the activities of the Lord from the realized soul, he will be able to conquer the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is unconquerable by any other process. So hearing, as Prabhupada said, or associating with devotees is the most important function for self-realization. Uh, therefore, this is all about pushing aside the exalted position of uh, highly welfare activities in the material world and accepting the position of a servant in the service of the Lord through the service of the Lord's representative. So that is the process. It's very simple. It requires guidance and it requires understanding on how to practically engage in devotional service. Mm -hmm. Hearing is the, is the process by which one awakens one's desire to serve. And, but deserve, service culminates in activities for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Of course, hearing is one of the nine processes of devotional service. So it is devotional service in and of itself. But in our Krishna consciousness movement, we are act, asked by the by the authorities, especially Srila Prabhupada, to accept some service. In other words, do something for Krishna. <laughs> Not only hear about him, that's important, and that's devotional service, but take that hearing process and learn how can one use, as it says, prana, artha, vacha, and... Uh, Buddhi. Prana means your life. Artha means your resources. Vakya means your words. And Buddhi means your intelligence. So the scriptures give us a verse that il illustrates that this is the four ways that we can serve the Lord by using, using our whole life to serve the Lord, by using our resources that we have, given to us by the Lord, by using our words and by using our intelligence. All these four categories are means to serve the Lord like that. So um, unless we engage with practical devotional service, we haven't really fully understood how to extricate ourselves because then we have to do something. And as long as we're doing something, there has to be some goal. So the goal of material activities is to further material life. And the goal of spiritual activities is to get out of material life and uh, connect with Krishna in loving service. So there's where the spiritual master is foundational and guiding one towards that. And this, this relationship with the spiritual master is the relationship with the Lord, who is you know, the spiritual master is considered to be the, the transparent via media to the Lord or the, the, uh, the lens by which we can see and serve the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We may decide, well, I don't need a spiritual master. I have a direct relationship with the Lord. I, uh, I am part and parcel of the Lord. Therefore, I can serve the Lord. But the Lord doesn't have to accept our service. 
because he is transcendental. And he uh, works according to how we respond to the process. So he has given the process as he's doing here, as Kapila Dave, is that by serving his spirit, his representative, we are actually engaging in service to him. Why? Because his representative is engaged in pure devotional service to him. So one who serves the pure devotee is actually serving the Lord because the pure devotee acts only on behalf of the Lord and enlightens the disciple in how best to serve the Lord. And because it is being given in that way, the Lord accepts our service through his representative, the spiritual master. In other words, that uh, apparent uh, go between between us and the Lord, the, the spiritual master, is the Lord's arrangement for understanding how best to serve him. So one by accepting that, we are exactly accepting the order of the Lord directly. And then it says here, Krishna conscious activities is not performed blindly, but with perfect understanding of knowledge and renunciation. What are we renouncing? We're renouncing material activities. What is that knowledge? The knowledge is our relationship with the Supreme Lord in devotion. This fixes the mind and frees one from the entanglement of material activities, which all have uh, fruit of results connected with it. Whether you act in a mode of goodness, passion, or ignorance, there is a material result. A material result results in uh, an act, it results in the mentality that pushes us further into that same arena of activities. In other words, material activities compound themselves, and we stay within the complex or in the confines of the complexity of material energy. But in devotional service, there is no material results. There is no results at all. Material, it is simply a way to offer our devotion to the Lord, which elevates our consciousness and brings us to the platform of happiness, knowledge, and freedom from material suffering. And then Prabhupada, at the beginning, talks about the nine processes. He says, one of them, two of them, or all of them. Uh, we have the example of uh, Ambarish Maharaj, mentioned in the ninth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, where he, he engaged in all nine processes of devotional service. Therefore, he elevated himself beyond the material energy because he was using all nine processes in devotional service. And of course, the complete process is to, to surrender everything, our complete, our life and everything connected to in devotion to the Lord. And that is called Atman Nivedanam, uh, the complete process of full surrender. And that's on the platform of spontaneous or uh, uh, what his soul is, in th is spontaneously engaged in devotional service to the Lord. And Prabhupada said, it doesn't matter what category you belong in, if you hear and from the self-realized soul, you can make progress in devotional service. Mm -hmm. And when we're engaged in devotional service, we're not engaged in material activities. <laughs> so one way of being free from material activities is not to perform material activities by performing devotional service because no one can do nothing. Uh, that's mentioned in the Gita, the Gita. No one can simply remain idle. One has to because we are sentient, we are uh, living beings, we have to perform activities or either the activities are material, spiritual, or a combination of both of them. That's called mixed devotional service. 
Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the class. Uh, dear devotees, if there are any, any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Haribo, Roberto. Hare Krishna Dina Maharaj. Thank you very much uh, <clears throat> for amazing classes. The more I'm listening, the, the more uh, I actually uh, I see this in practice. So thank you very much, especially to repeat the same points because you know some uh, I have to hear it many times <laughs> to get it in my head. Uh, you said that one thing that's really interesting. I had a thought about uh, how spiritual master is the representative of Krishna. So whatever spiritual master, because he only has a desire to serve Krishna, his you know all of his thoughts, everything is is synchronized with Krishna. So if spiritual master tells you to do something, uh, it's like Krishna tells told you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The words of the spiritual master are the medium by which we we get guidance from Krishna. He's simply being the, the means by delivering Krishna's desire for us. That's all. So at one point uh, they said that we can also use our intelligence to, if we get an instruction, to to try to see how to facilitate the instruction in a, uh, in a, in a way that it would be maybe. Uh, easier for us to, 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 to do the instruction. So th that's okay to kind of, okay, we get an instruction from a spiritual master, but then we use our intelligence how to, how to facilitate it. And it can be maybe a little differ different from the initial idea, but the essence will be there. Is that okay? Well, it can't be done without questioning. Yeah. Because if, if you have, if you're using your intelligence to do the instruction, and uh, it is not, it's different, but it may not be in line with what the spiritual master desires. So therefore you should clarify that. Mm. Well, it, was, it says, well, at least like the spiritual master might say, well, your service is to distribute prashadam to living entities. So you might think, well, there are living entities in the park, they are the birds, so every day I'll go out and just bring some food to the birds and the food is prashadam, therefore I'm distributing prashadam to the birds. In other words, one has figured it out in their own way, but that may not be the, the actual instruction. So for clarification, one should, using intelligence means to understand how best to serve the instructions. Mm. The spiritual master says, bring me a glass of water. And you think, well, milk is better than water. I'll bring him a glass of milk. No, that's not that's not following at all. That's using, that's just simply thinking that because milk is better than water from our perspective, but he didn't ask for that. He asked for water. So one should not assume they know everything or they know how to apply it. They should get clarification. If it's clear, if the instructions is clear, then go. But if it, if one, you know, one is not clear or thinks they can do it better, then uh, that should be uh, presented in order not to somehow mix one's own personal desires in with the instructions of the spiritual master and call it the instructions of the spiritual master. Spiritual master says they distribute books, so I can distribute books, so I can distribute any books I want. So you might write your own books and distribute it, and then you think I'm distributing books. Or you might find some other spiritual books that you think are interesting and people will like, but that's not the instruction. So using your intelligence does mean, doesn't mean to be over-intelligent, probably said over-intelligent, thinking they know better. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you very much, Maharaj. Yeah, your clarification is always there in order not to uh, become motivated by one's personal interest and call it devotional service. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I really understand it. It's really powerful. Thank you. Yeah, that's why I said, uh, what is that verse? Yeah, inquire submissively and render service. The query has to be there also. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Shri Devi. Please accept my humble obeisances or glories to Srila Prabhupada or glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, you have explained very clearly that devotional service is definitely completely transcendental and has nothing to do with the modes of material nature. But we are still, <clears throat> excuse me, we are still not on that platform in the sense that our motivation is mixed, our, our intent is mixed, so it's mixed devotional service. So as we continue, will we get more and more purified and more and more uh, fixed in pure devotional service? Or we have to make very active efforts to, to um, maybe introspect and see um, maybe our motivations are not correct or not pure. Yeah, all you have to do is follow the instructions of the spiritual master, that's all. <laughs> it's simple. And if you're not sure how to follow, you inquire in a practical way to get clarification. One who's fixed on the instructions of the spiritual master, it has no problem. Arjuna thought he knew more than Krishna. And he was presenting his ideas. And Krishna listened, but he said, socham and the socham stwa pratyavaram jibasa say, gatusums agudatsums cha nanu shochan dipanditaha. He said, you're speaking learned words, but I must consider that you don't, you don't, you are simply a fool. Because uh, you think that, you know, you know what is best for you for this situation here. And he had so many arguments, but Krishna listened and then told him he was a fool. After he, he clarified, the position, both position, and then Arjuna was ready to hear it. And then he said, now I'm a soul surrender to unto you, please instruct me. When it became a discussion, and both were discussing, Arjuna realized that he wasn't getting anywhere. He had to take the position of becoming a disciple. When he did that, then he became ready to hear what he had to do. And then from there, then Krishna un unspoke the entire philosophy to show him and to show the world, you know, what is devotional service and what is not devotional service. So using your intelligence means really inquiring on how to execute one's devotional service. It becomes quite easy, but the, the mind likes to add and dis and subtract from the different things. Yes, Guru Maharaj, uh, the directions are clear, the uh, instructions are there, but still uh, there's hesitation or there's doubt or there's uh, some anxiety. Well, that, yeah. that's, that's an indication that one is not surrendered. Mm. If you, you can clear your doubts, you can 
overcome the hesitations with relevant questions. Be ready for the answers. <laughs> but if we don't like the answers, every time we get an answer, we come up with another question based on the answer we get. And it becomes an endless question and answer with no, with no real out, uh, full outcome. In other words, there's no conclusion. Arjuna, Krishna was ready to hear all of the arguments that Arjuna presented, and he did, just to give him a chance to explain everything he found. And then Krishna says, now are you ready? Now you can hear the truth. And then Krishna spoke. So Prabhupada said, offer your doubts, ask your questions. Bring out all of the different misunderstandings, inequalities, confusions, hesitations. And then once everything is out, then you can hear what is the conclusion. What am I supposed to do? And what is the mood of how I'm supposed to do it? We think we know what's best for us. That's our problem. <laughs> as long as one has material desires they will enter into one's mindset and cause one to be uh, to add or distract something from the instructions like I said his spiritual master says, bring me a glass of water. He said, oh, no, I know better. Here, I'll give him a glass of milk. That's better. Mm. That's not surrender. That's not understanding. He's asking for this. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I really think that Lack of surrender is one of my biggest problems, actually, more than anything else. I'm telling you how to do it. All you have to do is do it. It's easy. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances. Yeah, Krishna gave you a little sample of your own independence. What, ha what happened? I will mention that. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about. He's warning you, you know, you think you know what's best for yourself. He saved you, but at the same time, he taught you. Mm. He's just showing your own desire, but Maya, as I tell, I say, Maya will always give us reasons to add on to the instructions that seem to be practical and needed like that. Maya is Maya. Mm. She's going to purify you by showing you your own attachments that come in the form of your hesitation or your confusion about executing instructions. And it looks like something good. Mm. Yes. Uh, it's very, it seems very plausible, it seems very reasonable, it seems very logical, it seems the right thing, but if it's not the order of the spiritual master, then it's against Krishna. Um, the order of the spiritual masters is for our own spiritual upliftment. Even if it doesn't seem to be the most practical thing, that is not the way to understand it. Understand it in a certain sense that it is, in the long run, it is the best thing. In the immediate thing, it may not seem that way. Mm. That's one way to perceive. I will surrender if I get this. I surrender after I do this. I surrender when um, when I'm ready. <laughs> I'm getting ready to surrender. Anyway, all right, so you're getting ready to surrender. 
But when the instructions are clear, just follow them. That's all. That's all. If they're not clear, then question them. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But then again, after a while, when one remains uh, stubborn, then the spiritual master will let you go on and do whatever you want to do, and you get the results accordingly. That's Krishna. Krishna says, oh, all right. Oh, you think you know better? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Krishna. That's, what, that's when we're in a dangerous position, when we lose the opportunity for the mercy because we continually make our own plans on how to surrender. Hmm. And Krishna said, all right, go for it. This stubbornness is something. I'll let you do what you want. The stubbornness. I'll let you do what you want. Right. But it's uh, very detrimental, and it's a uh, it's uh, actually waste of time, and uh, it doesn't help. Yeah. It's a, it's a big waste of time because ultimately you have to come back to that point. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I understand. Yeah, we put our material responsibilities ahead of our spiritual activities. And we think that, that that's going to support or make our spiritual activities, you know, better. If that's the instruction, then, then you can follow that. But if it's not the instruction, then it's contrary. Yes, good. Thank you so much for clarifying and instructing. I'll be booking my tickets okay. in the next 24, 48 hours. Yeah, good. Send me the uh, information and I'll um, help you. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. I will forward the itineraries and help and seek your blessing for that. Dithering over here mm -hmm. and postponing and procrastinating is not helping me, that's for sure. It's bringing me down, actually. I can see that. Yeah, and that's because you have a desire to surrender. But Maya has somehow convinced you that you have that your surrender will come according to your own way, <laughs> which mm. never happens. Which never happens. That's so true. Mm. Praying for your mercy and the mercy of the Vaishnavas to move uh, forward in my life. I can I can tell a story. It's the story is about um, Kailash. Um, the story I had, I, you just remind, I haven't told this story in, in years and years and years. And I just remembered it. It's the story of Kailash. I know um, that story very much. It's very instructive. So Kailash, is a, he's a merchant. He's actually an entrepreneur. And he, he's quite wealthy and he hasn't. You know, he's just began a family and he's also quite successful in business. So he happens to meet Narada Muni. And uh, Narada Muni instructs him and says, Kailash, you know, you should give up all this attachment to your family and actually surrender fully in, to Krishna consciousness. And he listens, but then he says, well, you know, the children still have to grow up yet, so let the, when the children grow up and then I can instruct him to take over the business and then I'll, I'll be free. So Narada leaves. So after many years, Narada comes back and sees that, you know, Kailash is in the same position. He says, all right, Kailash, is, there, is everything all right now? Can you come and engage in full devotional service? He said, well, you know, the children have grown up and they've taken over the business, but you know, they don't really know how to do it. And I'm their father and therefore it's my duty to instruct them. So I'll take over. I'll continue to instruct them until they get it right. And then I'll surrender. Okay. So then Narada leaves again. 
So now he comes back and uh, Kailash is really an old man now and, and the children are in the business. And then he said, all right, Kailash, are you ready now? He said, well, you know, my children are grown up and they took over the business, but they have their own children and they don't really know how to take care of their children. So I'm their, you know, father. It's my duty to instruct them. I'm going to guide them. So Narada gets disgusted and he leaves. So he comes back after many years and then he's looking around and he's trying to find Kailash and he sees the family members. He said, uh, um, well, where, where's your, uh, where's your uh, father Kailash? Uh, oh, he died. Oh, Narada thinks, oh, I lost another one. So Narada is walking out and then as he's walking out, he sees a dog and the dog says, Narada, it's me, Kailash, I became a dog. Narada says, oh, right. it's not too late, Kailash. You can still surrender as a dog. Come on. And Kailash, in the form of the dog, says, but, you know, somebody has to guard the house. I'm the guard dog. Who will protect the family? That's my duty. So Kailash says, uh, uh, you know, so Narada gets disgusted and he leaves again. So he decides to go back up the year and see what that dog is doing. So he goes to the house, talks to the family members, and they said, they, he said, where's that dog he used to have outside? He said, oh, he died. So Narada thinks, oh, well, it's too late now. So now he's going out and he's walking and he hears, hey, Kailas, over here. I mean, hey, Narada, over here. Oh, where's that? And he sees in the bush, there's a snake. And he, he says, Kailash, is that you? Yes, it's me, Narada. I've become a snake. Well, uh, come on, it's not too late. Well, you know, the dog died and there's no one to guard the house. So I'm the snake. I'm going to do it. So Narada gets a little disgusted. So he walks into the house and he says to the family members, you know, you have a snake in your yard. Oh, really? And so they came out with sticks. And they start beating their grandfather with the sticks in the form of the snake. So Narada says, Kailash, are you ready now? Yeah, I'm ready now. <laughs> Krishna, I don't want to wait to become a dog and a snake, Guru Maharaj. Please save me. <laughs> <laughs> so I told that story in a large assembly of people. At the end, one man came up to me and he had a long face. He looked very sad. He said, you know, my name is Kailash. <laughs> oh my God. And, and I, you know, and I, I immediately said, oh, I said, well, I think that story was meant for you. <laughs> I told him that. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't so happy. But uh, he got the message. So yeah, we always have some excuse not to surrender. That's the point of the whole. Prabhupada tells that story. That's a Prabhupada story. So, you know, we always go, oh, I'll surrender when I get this done. I'll surrender when I get that. I'll surrender in this situation. Give me some time and I'll surrender. I'll surrender. Be patient. I'll get it. But Maya is always giving us reasons why we should not go ahead and surrender. They all seem to be logical, practical, important reasons. <laughs> okay, so I thought I'd speak that story. Thank you for reminding me that story because it's been years since I remember that story. Thank you for sharing that story and instructing Guru Maharaj. Yeah, why why do we have to keep getting beaten down by material energy before we actually wake up? Yes, Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you.
I surrender. Okay, I'll wait for your next letter. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, Ashutosh Prabhu had raised his hand, but I think he's not there. Okay. Hare Krishna Mata Ji. Oh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mata. Thank you, Mata Ji. I'm going to ask the question. Uh, humble obeisances to you, Maharaj, and all glories to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. So, Maharaj, my question was that when we are trying to surrender, how do we manage our anxieties in that process? Uh, get rid of them. <laughs> anxiety means anxiety means you know, I we're trying to hold on to something. That's why the anxiety. There's no anxiety in surrender. It's easy. But when we're trying to hold something on and then surrender at the same time, which that that trying to hold on to something. Right. And surrender at the same. 300 yeah. yards at the roundabout, take the fourth exit and stay on. Yeah, so uh, we have to be ready to understand clearly what is the instruction. Then there's no anxiety. It's easy. And Maharaj, uh, and how about the attachments to all these material things, you know, I think if, if you're saying about anxiety, but then how do you get rid of it? You know, it's like kids, job, how, how do you then, you know? It, it depends. If you're seeing kids and job as a form of your own sense gratification, then it's material. If you see it as a service to the Lord and you do it in that mood of service to the Lord, that's spiritual. Even looking after your own kids, if you see them as a service to the Lord, we have to work with the material when we're in the household ashram. But in the household ashram, it's meant to elevate our consciousness because ashram means place to spiritual cultivation. So we're cultivating devotional service by playing the role of a devotee in the form of a mother and a wife. So we do that. So your role is material or apparently material, but the activity is spiritual. But if you're playing the role of a wife or a mother in a material way, then it's then it's material. That's the difference between materialistic family life and spiritual family life. Spiritual family life means everything is moving towards Krishna and spiritual life. Family life, uh, material family life means everything is moving towards uh, enjoying the material energy. Yes, so Maharaj. We have a sense of duty. We don't like this word duty because it's something that's placed upon us and it seems to be an imp imposition. It's my duty, but the duty actually brings you to higher consciousness. My duty to serve the Lord as a mother, as a wife, as a, you know, a homemaker, whatever roles you're playing in your position, that can all be used in Krishna service. If you're guiding your children spiritually, then that's, then the home is spiritual. Yes, Maharaj. It's a matter of consciousness. It's, it's, it's not so much the, act, the activity, it's the consciousness that we perform the activity in. In spiritual life, material success and material, what we say failure, have no effect upon us. But if we calculate material effect and uh, material success and failure in relationship to whether we're making advancements spiritually or not, then that's a misunderstanding. If everything is going nice in the family, it doesn't mean we're spiritual. Maharaj, 
if everything is yes. become, if we're becoming more Krishna conscious, then then it's spiritual. You can fail materially and still succeed spiritually, but you can't fail spiritually and call that success because everything material is going on nicely. And therefore you have to connect the activities to Krishna. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, yat karosi aranasi yat yahosi dadasti yat yat tapasi tukuntiya tat kurushu all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you perform should be done as an offering to me. So when we're serving our children, we're serving Krishna by serving our children. When we're serving our husband, we're serving Krishna by serving our husband. So we have to apply the spiritual principles along with the practical material needs that carry on the activity. And the results are up to Krishna. If we're attached to material success, that's the mode of passion. Yes, Maharaj, we can endeavor uh, so we do our best, but the goal is to become Krishna conscious. If if the, if the family members are becoming more Krishna conscious, then it's it's successful. If they're not, then it's it's material. I remember I was in London, and. Uh, I was driving around some person I had just met. They were driving me around London. So we were talking and then this person was saying, it was one lady, she came to the Bhakti Vedanta Manor and she, uh, she came in front of the deities, she Sri Radha Gokulananda and started to pray, my dear Lord, my son is going to school. He has 10 subjects. Please make him get 10 A's. And she sincerely, with all energy, prays. She's very sincere. So at the end of the semester, the boy got nine A's. He didn't get 10, he got nine. So she went back in front of the deities. He said, my dear Lord, I prayed for 10, you only gave me nine. She was unhappy. Krishna failed. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a true story I'm telling you with how it was related to me <laughs> so. so the person who was telling me knew the lady quite well so yeah so this is how we look we look at Krishna to supply our material results and if he does then we, we like Krishna and we're more enthusiastic but when he doesn't we think Krishna's failed or I failed or something failed like that. You know, Prabhupada tells the story how during World War II, uh, the wives, the, the, the daughters, the uh, sisters of the soldiers, they all went to the churches, into the temples, into the, house, the houses of prayer, all praying to bring their son their, their brother, their husband back. And when they didn't come back, they, they gave up God. God didn't come through. We became atheists. So we shouldn't try to use Krishna to fulfill our material desires. That's not devotional service. We should engage our material activities in Krishna's service, and that is spiritual. That's all. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Does that help? Definitely, Maharaj. You know, it's helping every time you're saying it. 
and as you said to mataji as well surrender and that stuff is exactly right, for me as well then turn left I'm going to try my best maharaj uh well the idea is just simply understand that we're not these bodies but we play the role of mother wife we play so many roles but the roles are not us it's just our role in this world that's all but our real role is jivar sarupai krishna and nichidas we're meant to develop our love for krishna and devotion when we have that or when we're on that path then everything becomes wonderful then success is even greater and failure is another form of success that's all Krishna is not there to fulfill our material desires that's not his program he is giving us what we need yes Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, uh, are there any more questions, or comments, or realization here? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Sri Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, I would have a question connected to this uh, topic that uh, we don't uh, ask any, anything for uh, personal gain. Uh, it's a bit, uh, uh, how to say, it's a special type of question <laughs> and uh, not really concerning me, but uh, I, I just got today into, into a, a strange, difficult situation uh, connected to this uh, because uh, I, I gave class in the morning and I, I spoke uh, about uh, uh, what uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur said uh, about the four motivations, uh, how we, uh, we approach God. Uh, and uh, it was also mentioned uh, this that that we don't uh, this second uh, when we we want to to get some personal gain from uh, from him <clears throat> and yeah i mentioned that um, yeah usually there there is uh, when someone prays for a uh, hus good husband good wife and i was really surprised that in the end someone um, uh, how to say uh, crit criticized this uh, statement that it's not bad when we pray for that because uh, because then it can be exemplary or or she re also referred to uh, to Bhakti Minot Thakur also had a big family and I just had this feeling that uh, the reason for her to so much press this point that it's it's okay when we pray for this because uh, she might have this desire i don't know i don't see what was in her her heart but uh, but it became quite a long discussion about this and i, I just ha had this feeling that she wanted me to to say that it's okay when someone prays for this and it was surprising for me from from devotees and and how, what can we say in this kind of situation yeah, that's that's what everybody prays to God for, to fulfill their material desires. That's the that's what goes on as religion today. You go to church, you become a nice churchgoer, and you give donations, and you take part in this church activities. But your real desire is to make your material life better. That's all. And a lot of times, these institutions they also support that. 
And if your material life is becoming more successful, then that's an indication God is favoring you. But Prabhupada talks about his own person. He said, if, he said that uh, if God uh, wants to favor you, he gives you everything. But if he really wants to favor you, favor you he takes everything away. Prabhupada said he did that with me. He took everything away from me. But then he gave everything back when Prabhupada surrendered completely to his instructions of his spiritual master to go to the West and preach Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, I had a wife and some children. I gave it all up. And now I have 300 children and no, no problem with wife. <laughs> So Prabhupada was showing that, you know, you, get, you can get everything and more in spiritual life that you're looking for in material life without all the problems of material life. If Krishna, yeah, Krishna can give you everything. But if you're praying for that and that's your desire, then sometimes, and I say this, this is a, this is a, a statement by both the scriptures and by Prabhupada, sometimes Krishna will fulfill your material desire just to help you move forward in Krishna consciousness. But if he sees that that's, that's your program, then after a while, he won't do that. Or if he fulfills your material desires and he sees that you're becoming more attached to your material success in life, then he doesn't do that anymore. He may do it just to inspire us in our devotional service because he knows what's best for us in the long run. So it's so true. I, I just had this experience this year that uh, I I started some some gardening at home. <laughs> And uh, I just realized that uh, this hot summer comes and it's, it, it became a burden that there are these plants I, and I have to be here to water them. And, and even uh, having plants is, can be, how to say, a, a burden. What about uh, what to speak of when we have other difficult, I mean, other duties like, like family relationships, which are even more uh, uh, the category of duties. So, so I just uh, really started to think about that. Uh, I, I have to be very conscious what kind of uh, things I start, which won't be a, an, an obstacle uh, when I, I want to, um, to do any kind of spiritual stuff, like, I don't know, when we go for Padayatra with devotees, so it, it shouldn't be an obstacle that, oh, I have to stay and water the plants or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whatever duty you take on, there's always a responsibility, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I mean, this this is more important for me to to be able to go anywhere when it's needed uh, with the devotees than than just to maintain plants okay. or any many things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little foresight would help. It was a nice, nice experience in this this regard. Uh, so, thank so you, you very still much. have your plans. You still yeah, have but your I plans. probably next year I won't have them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you all right? That's whatever works best for your devotional service. Yeah, I, I didn't really think about it at that time because, you know, there was this uh, virus situation. We couldn't go anywhere anyway, so it uh, it wasn't really a concern. But uh, but uh, usually, it it really needs some intelligence to see uh, what can be an obstacle and what 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 is not. And so it's yeah, live and learn. And so thank you very much, Hare Krishna.
Okay, Bruder, did we uh, exhaust okay. all the questions? Hey, I think so, Maharaj. Uh, anyone has any more questions or realizations? Sudha Mataji, yes. Sudha Mataji, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> it's okay, Mataji. I, we still have time or I can ask tomorrow. Yeah, yeah we got, we, we have some time. Oh, okay, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Dhanu Pranam, uh, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, just, uh, <clears throat> Guru Maharaj, like, uh, thank you for the very nice class. Uh, just like a small clarification, I'm just trying to understand. Um, uh, the last uh, point you mentioned, it's very enlightening, very striking to me. Like, um, uh, like we have to understand, like we are not this body and we are here to do our roles. So just trying to apply this uh, to the uh, Maharaj, you mentioned the story about Kailash, like um, Narada Muni was asking uh, to surrender, but uh, he wanted to take care of the kids and he became um, a dog uh, like that. So, um, so I I'm just trying to understand like uh, uh, why he became dog. I mean, just, uh, I don't know, Kailash, if it's a devotee. I mean, if you're still a devotee and trying to do... Yeah, um, he, he was attached to the house. He was so attached to the house, he couldn't give it up into the family. So he became, because of his attachment, he took birth as a dog so he could stay in that house and in that family and still... But because he didn't, he lost the position of having a human form of life, he still had his attachment, but now he couldn't enjoy it in the same way. Okay. okay. <laughs> Prabhupada says, you know, you're attached to your house and then you die in the house, then you might come back in the same house as a, a cockroach in the corner of the same house. <laughs> Oh, okay. mm -hmm. If your attachment is your house and it's the main attachment in life, you, you get to come back again. But because you, the human form of life is given for self-realization, but your attachment is simply to a piece of a building, then you get your attachment, but you don't get the, the body to enjoy the attachment in. Oh, okay. Material energy is very, very uh, strict can't play around with the material energy. I mean, Krishna is merciful, but material energy is sometimes very cruel. Very mm -hmm. cruel. And Krishna sets the laws of material energy in, in progress, and then he allows those laws to work accordingly. Only when we come to him can he somehow or other adjust those laws to work in different ways for us. But as long as we are attached to, you know, the material, we're going to have to work under the laws of the material. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to practice um, uh, as a duty. We have to do it. Um, yes. And we just, other... we just work under the work under Krishna and Krishna's representative. That's all. Okay. Do your because, duty. Uh... But, you know, follow your instructions, chant your heart, the holy names of the Lord, live a life based on the devotional principles, serve your family, knowing that they are, they could give and given to you by Krishna, they are beloved, they belong to Krishna, and serve them in the proper way. Okay, okay, Maharaj, yeah. It's easy. So Hmm. So, uh, I mean, uh, Maharaj, as you mentioned, uh, we also, as a, um, we are practicing devotional service, we also need to have that intelligence, uh, very cautious, like uh, what we are doing, the activities, uh, right, Maharaj? That's um, why we have the instructions of the spiritual master. He is the mm -hmm. intelligent force in our life. Just refer to his instructions, his mm -hmm. words, his books, everything. We have Prabhupada, we have our spiritual master, we have so much knowledge available. Whatever subject, whatever practical situation we find ourselves in, there is both examples and teachings to guide us. And if we don't find it directly through our own research, then we can just question directly, this is my situation, what should I do? Or how should I act? Mm. What, is, what is the proper way to act in this situation. 
Yes, yes, marriage. Yeah. Why is it so why is it so hard? It's so easy when we try to figure it out ourselves, we get confused. That's why it's hard. But when we take the intelligence given to us by Shastra and Guru and and learn how to apply it, it becomes easy. Mm. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Your daily nectar is really helping me um, to keep uh, um, like introspecting me where what uh, where I am, what should I do, what should I not do. Thank you so much. Yeah, just realize that we are a servant. You can't get away from that. We have to serve. So we can serve the material, we can serve the spiritual. So if we're serving the spiritual, we have to know how to do it. So we don't somehow or other mix in our material desires with our spiritual activities. And that's we that's where you ask questions. This is my situation. What do I do? How do I understand it? Mm. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Thank you so much, Maharaj, Guru Maharaj. I have one quick question, Guru Maharaj. It's okay. Can I ask? Um, yeah, but um, see, that, that last question is very important for you to understand because it's a more sweeping question. It covers everything you wanted to know. Yeah, as long as we think we know, we're going to be confused. Mm. It's, it's like the story of the child. He says, you know, it's amazing. As I'm growing up, my parents get smarter and smarter. You get the point? Um, yes, Maharaj, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, the child is, the parents are not getting smarter. The child is just realizing that their parents are actually more intelligent than as he's growing up and learning more, he's understanding more about his parents. But Krishna is giving us everything through this, through the bona fide spiritual master. Mm. But if we, you know, we have to learn, first of all, what is our desire? Do we want to become Krishna conscious or do we want some kind of happy material life? Mm -hmm. we can be happy in this world when we're when we're connected to Krishna because Krishna is the controller of everything both material and spiritual mm -hmm. center everything around Krishna Krishna and if you're not sure how to do it then Whatever situation comes up, you ask the question. This is my situation. What do I do? How do I how do I see it in a spiritual way? Yes, Maharaj. I think definitely I need um, um, like a guidance from you. Uh, I my intelligence sometimes like you know most of the time like I get confused. Um, uh, especially after coming to this Krishna conscious moment, I always try to like, okay, um, compare and see, okay, am I doing right or wrong? Um, work in, the confusion is due to the fact that we are so attuned to our own way of doing things and now we're learning the right way. And the confusion is how to, how to make that mind, uh, you know, connected to Krishna and devotional service. And sort of, sort of putting aside our own way of doing things, our own way of seeing things. Mm -hmm. Do it this way here. Krishna is the source of everything. Everything is under his control. Bhaktaram Yagya Prasapasam, Sarvaloka Maheshwaram, Suhidam Sarabhutanam, Shantam Yamam Richjati. Krishna says, I am the supreme. Uh, I am the proprietor and controller of all the material worlds. I am the uh, I am the supreme enjoyer. I'm supreme controller, and I am the best friend of all of the entities. This is the peace formula. This verse is 5:29 in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna sums up what his position is, and therefore you have to understand that nothing in this world has anything 
to do with our happiness. Everything comes from Krishna. Therefore, our happiness comes from Krishna. Mm. Because Krishna is the source of everything. So anything material you have is simply the energy of Krishna. How are you going to use it? Are you going to use it for his service or are you going to try to enjoy it separately? That's all. Krishna gives you your quota. He says, take what you need to live in this world nicely and engage in devotional service. He doesn't say give up your family. He doesn't say give up your occupation. He says, do everything as a service for me. That's all. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, that's a very important point that I need to understand. Whatever all you have, I do... connect, you, you have to connect with Krishna, that's all. The more you connect with Krishna, the more you can feel his presence, the more you feel his presence, the more you become happy and peaceful. The more you do that, then it becomes really clear that it's all about Krishna. It's not about, you know, some material success by rearranging the material energy in such a way that it works differently. <laughs> Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So everything is from Krishna. Yeah. So I have to yeah. ask. Mm -hmm. try to just try to love Krishna. That's all. Mm -hmm. Love for Krishna is natural. Krishna is lovable. As you connect with Krishna in devotion, everything becomes so easy and natural. Yes, yes. To stay on the philosophical level. You become confused. It's about connecting with Krishna. Mm -hmm. He's there. He's there in your heart. He's the closest thing to you. He's closer to you than you are to yourself. Very um, nice point. Very soothing points. All you yeah. have to do. All you have to do is just try to love Krishna. That's all. It's easy. It's there. That love is natural. It's there within you. Just bring it out. Mm -hmm. Chant his name, hear about him, talk about him, remind other people of him. Become Krishna conscious, that's all. <laughs> Yes, yes, good Maharaj. Yeah, very beautiful points. Chant about him, hear about him, talk about him. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pray to him. Write letters to him. <laughs> yeah. yes. Prabhupada said, not too many people want Krishna, but when Krishna sees somebody who really wants him, and Krishna becomes inclined to that person. Just like in the material world, if nobody really wants you, you don't go around those people who don't want you. But somebody who likes you and wants you, you go, you, you sort of gravitate towards that association. Same with Krishna. People don't want, what they want from Krishna is what Krishna can give them. That's what they want. That's the world. They want Krishna, not so much him. They want what he can give. Mm -hmm. But devotees are not interested in what he can give because they know what he can give is insignificant compared to giving himself. Therefore, Krishna doesn't give himself so easily because when you get Krishna, you get everything. Krishna is controlled by love. It's easy, just love Krishna. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. All your blessings and mercy. Definitely when we have Krishna, yeah, we have everything. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, just, just try mm -hmm. to love Krishna. That's all. It's easy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. I just have one quick question, Guru Maharaj. Small clarification if I'm doing it right. Uh, just like recently, um, uh, it's like uh, we signed up for, uh, it's part of my son's uh, volunteering. 
um, just I signed up for like uh, making sandwiches. Actually, it's a non-profit organization um, for feeding hungry. Uh, so I just wanted to distribute prasadam also. So they said they're going to accept only sandwiches. Um, uh, so I'm just um, planning to make some sandwiches and give to them. So is it like a devotional service? It's it's like uh, okay to do that. Is it uh, is vegetarian? Oh uh, yes, Maharaj. It's vegetarian. It's vegetarian. And uh, what group is it? Um, it's um, Urban Ministry. Um, they um, it's a non-profit organization. They have a lot of services. Um, they do like um, uh, cook food, and uh, uh, that's the only organization I was looking actually to distribute prasadam also, where I can cook and uh, offer and give it. So um, I came across this and um, they said they'll accept only sandwiches. Um, yeah, that's it, Maharaj. So, so is it still considered prasadam if I just uh, get a bread and just make some uh, peanut butter and give it to them? Mm, not really, we have to offer it with devotion. Oh yeah, we'll offer and I just, um, uh, I am planning to do that, like offering and just give it to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's all right. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all right, I guess. Mm -hmm. Better to, uh, you know, connect with some temple and do the same thing. Uh, yes, yes, Maharaj. I mean, usually we do that. Uh, like we have, we don't have a temple here, but um, um, like uh, in Hillsboro, like that, whenever we have big festivals, we go there and we have like a Ratayatra coming up like soon in November. So we do cook and do this. This as a part of like uh, my son's volunteering, I came across this. So I just wanted to confirm if it's okay to do like that. It doesn't hurt. You know, it doesn't hurt. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better to get involved with some temple activities directly. Okay, okay good match. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so thank, we'll you so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you um, tomorrow. I'm not sure of my schedule, and I'll, um, the information will come out before tomorrow, what time. I'll be available tomorrow. There's a lot happening here at the temp local temple, which I'm supposed to be, well, I will be practically part of. So I have to see what the schedule is. So um, just check with Mother Lavanya and we'll see. And I'll give her the information within a few hours about tomorrow's class, what time it is. It may be a slightly different time, but it will be around the same time. Okay, Maharaj. Hey, Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki. Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a nice class and very nice question. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mother Runda, for offering your service today. I know you went out of your way to do the service today. Thank you. No, Maharaj, I'm, I'm always there to serve. Thank you so much, Maharaj, mm -hmm. for the opportunity. Yeah. Nice Thank service. you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you to what is in the call. Hare Krishna.